It's only November, and yet we've witnessed one of the best league finishes of the entire season. And no, I'm not talking about UEFA's attempt to get as much money as possible while rigging out every last drop of an athlete's blood, sweat, and tears, but it's actually about the League of Ireland's Premier Division. Now, if you're a fan of FIFA, you've actually probably heard of some of these clubs, because they are typically some of the lowest rated in the entire game. In fact, the two that are actually in the relegation spots are specifically in the top five worst rated clubs in FC 25. Fair enough to EA, they got that one right, but we're not here to dole out compliments to EA, something that makes me break out in hives, but instead we're going to be talking about the insanity of the Irish Premier Division. Let's start with a huge story involving one of the biggest clubs in the league, Dundalk. Just four seasons ago, this club was playing Arsenal in the Europa League, and now they've been officially relegated. But believe it or not, this actually isn't the worst case scenario for them. Dundalk are in massive financial trouble, in part because of the lack of prize money given out to clubs who participate in the Irish League, as well as four separate ownership changes in just the last few years, with those said owners being stingy as hell. So typically in the Irish League, these Irish clubs actually lose money unless they make it into a European competition, so it's on the owners to make up that difference. Unfortunately, that hasn't really been happening, and that's been very apparent with the most recent owner and hairline model for werewolves, Brian Ainscow. The takeover itself was controversial, as a loophole meant that the financial duties of the club before the takeover landed on those specific owners rather than Werewolf Man. As a result, wages for both staff members and players were getting delayed, liquidation was well and truly alive, and all Ainsy here was getting upset at being called out by a fan on Twitter. Who would have thought that the man who was sued by a US youth club after trying to damage it when his contract wasn't renewed and breached financial duties as a board member was a terrible person who's bad with money? You know, it's always the people you least suspect. Now thankfully for Dundalk, the club was saved at the last minute and they will indeed avoid liquidation but with relegation confirmed, it will be an uphill battle for them to not just return to the top flight, but maintain a healthy financial situation along the way. Now while this might be the most impactful story for a specific club in the league, it's still not technically the most exciting but rather it's the title race between six different clubs. So as a quick background, the Irish Premier Division has 10 clubs in the competition. Each club plays the others a total of four times, two home and two away, for a total of 36 matches played, with the champion earning a UCL qualifier spot. However, it seems like each club in the league hates winning, hates money, maybe even hates UEFA, or potentially a combination of all three, because each club is playing about as well as their overall on FIFA. With 33 matches played, six of the 10 clubs in the league were still within reach of winning the title. Not reaching top two, not getting conference league qualification, but literally getting first place. That's 60% of the league still going at it for the title. Imagine 12 Premier League clubs going at it until the final day. That's how insane this is. Now in this title race are Shelbourne, Derry City, Shamrock Rovers, St. Pat's, Galway United, and Sligo Rovers. All of these clubs are within one win of each other with most of the point difference coming from draws or losses. Now the league leaders at this point were Shelbourne, who had 54 points from 33 matches. That means the most that they could get would be 63 points, which is well below averaging two points per game, something that barely qualifies an English Premier League club to get top four. As a comparison, the lowest amount of points a club got while still winning the title in the past decade was back in 2013, when St. Patrick's Athletic got 71 points. A potential eight point difference is bad enough, but it's made even worse when you realize that they were playing fewer matches back then. If Shelbourne were to win the title, they would most likely have the fewest amount of wins, fewest amount of goals scored, fewest amount of points, and the worst goal difference since 2012. And this includes 2020 when COVID hit and half the season was cancelled and only half the matches were played. And to sum up the abysmal league leaders, Shelbourne fans, I'm sorry, I just, it's just, this is, this is just insane to me. They came into the 34th match day without a win in five straight matches. The league leaders, who are statistically the worst league leaders of all time, 
we're still in first place after a spell of collecting two points out of a potential 15. Now listen, I'm an Arsenal fan, all right? I get bottling, I understand bottling, but this, this is a whole new level. Oh, and Derry City, who's in second place and also in the Irish Cup final, don't think you can get away from this scot-free, okay? You've been just as bad as Shelbourne. Now, yes, you're only two points behind the leaders with three matches to go. Certainly, it's all to play for, but your form has been awful. Derry City, real quick, let me, let me ask you this. How many points have you gotten in your last five matches? Now, in third place at this point was Shamrock Rovers, the most historic and winningest side in Irish club football history, and the ones predicted to win again, albeit in a tight battle. Now, these guys have actually picked up form a bit in the last few matches, collecting four wins, one draw, and one loss, including a win over first place Shelbourne, while also starting their Conference League games at the same time. Unfortunately, that doesn't really mean much if you were predicted to win the league in the first place and are the most historic team in the entire history. A rocky start only kept them within reaching distance of the title because of the constant fumbling of nearly every other club in the league, especially Shelbourne. Dude, I don't even know this club and they've caught like 10 insults already, but, but you can't say it's not deserved. Now in fourth place at this point was St. Pat's and they were doing something a little bit different than everyone else and actually trying to win their games. After match day 23, they were in seventh place with only 28 points. Points. After match day 33, they're now in fourth place, just four points behind the leaders after getting 22 points from the previous 10 matches, including winning their last six. Now, someone might have to fact check me on this, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like if you win matches, you actually climb up the table a bit. Someone, can someone look into that, please? And finally, in fifth and sixth place at this point, were Galway United and Sligo Rovers, with these two only being in the mix because they've managed to hang around while the clubs above them continue to f*** up. I mean, Sligo Rovers had a negative seven goal difference and were still in the title race. Now, you guys remember a few seasons ago when Bayern and Dortmund were just handing the title back and forth between each other? That's basically what's happening here, except it's between six clubs, not two. Now, unfortunately, after the 34th match day, two of the six clubs were officially out of the title race, as Galway United lost to fourth place title contender St. Pat's, and Sligo Rovers and their negative nine goal difference lost to Bohemian FC. With just two matches to go, this is what the table looked like. Just four points separating first and fourth, all of the goal differences within touching distance of each other, and each of the top four clubs actually winning their matches to put pressure on one another, an idea I can only imagine popped into the head of one of the coaches while they were on some hallucinogenic drugs because it's so crazy it just might work. So that means that left just four clubs, Shelbourne, Derry City, Shamrock Rovers, and St. Pat's. Now Shelbourne and Shamrock had their matches against the bottom two clubs in the league, meaning that they were too good to lose. But uh, you know, they, they definitely still tried to. Derry and St. Pat's, however, faced off against each other with Derry only having one win in their last six matches, while St. Pat's had eight wins in nine matches, it was clear that Derry had their work cut out for them, but a win was necessary to keep their title hopes alive. Now, St. Pat's continued their insane form and ended the title hopes of Derry City, and while Shelbourne and Shamrock winning meant that their own title hopes were over, it was still an impressive end to St. Pat's' season. And so that means, on the final day, it came down to Shelbourne and Shamrock Rovers. Early into the final day, Shamrock took an early lead to put pressure on their title contender rivals, and less than 10 minutes into the second half, they doubled their lead. Shelbourne, on the other hand, were looking like their 10-match winless streak selves and were having trouble putting the ball in the back of the net. It was looking like their trophy drought would continue and the worst choke that I've literally ever seen would come to fruition. However, Harry Wood was subbed on in the 74th minute to add more attacking power and in the 85th, he put his team ahead with a late goal. Now the best part about this is that Wood wasn't really Shelbourne's player of the season. In fact, he wasn't even on the team for the entire season. He actually got transferred from Grimsby on July 4th. He also only played 635 minutes in 13 matches, which only gets to about playing half of the matches that he played in. He only had one assist for them in the league, and that goal he scored? 
That was his first goal scored for the club. That's just like Balotelli's first and only assist for City, except, you know, Shelbourne are obviously bigger. So that means that Shelbourne, despite their 10-match winless run, ended up winning the Irish Premiership, their first top flight trophy since 2006. Now, I may not have known that much about the Irish Premier Division before researching some of this info, and I may not know a whole lot now, honestly. But what I do know is that I will follow any league that's entertaining and gives an exciting finish to the end of the season. Like the Icelandic League having a final day matchup between the first and second place teams. Oh my god, I have to research this now. Some of the Irish names were hard enough to pronounce. What the hell is this? How do, what do I do with this?